Hi guys, Jack here. Welcome back to Ozymandias. Today we're playing on the Mediterranean map as the Britons, which are the hardest civ on the map. So let's see how we do. If this is your first time watching Ozymandias, it's kind of like a stripped back civ 5 kind of game. 4x and the games only last about half an hour to one hour, so they're pretty fun. Uh, that screen there you see I have open with the science speaker is my research. You can use it to increase the yield you get from each tile, like more research, which you use to research those things. Uh, money, which you can use to spend on your military might, food, or more research. And then food, which you use to buy new tiles, like what I'm doing right there, and expand your cities or build new ones. So for the first few turns here, I'm skipping through just to make it a little bit quicker. And as you can see, we're expanding. We start off with all the British tiles pretty well. And my first move is to immediately beeline for uh, Northern Europe here, the peninsula, because I want to get a strong foothold and there's lots of tiles I need. We're sandwiched between blue and green here who have boxed us in. And so now our only other option really is the ocean. We've got like maybe 14 tiles of ocean there. And Ocean's a difficult one because like I talk in all my videos, it's important, it's a key to victory, but it's really expensive to get any techs on and you start off with no yields. Luckily, we get a super critical opportunity there, which is four science per C. So now I have my plan. I'm going to buy a bunch of C tiles and then once I get enough, I'll claim my map making bonus there and get a bunch. We pick up another really good opportunity for C, which uh, is place three flags on a C and then get all the flag techs. Flag techs are another type of research which make placing a flag, so meaning you get to claim it, a little bit cheaper. Which is nice because, you know, saving science, saving food is always good. And then here we get the critical turn, we get 10 science per city. I save up my food to buy a city. I claim my science, I claim my seat, and we get exactly 104. Perfect. So now I go for research first because then I'll uh, have more research and I'll be able to buy more uh, yield tiles for my ocean. If this map wasn't as cramped um, as it is, what I might have done is bought the food tech first because then it allows you to buy a lot more tiles and you just keep rinse and repeating. But here, pretty much every single sieve starts with uh, just kind of a small area, maybe like 20 tiles that they get to expand into with the exceptions of what will become our enemies, the Carthaginians. They start in, oh, kind of like Libya area in Northern Africa, and they have the whole little uh, desert, Sahara Desert to expand into and a bunch of mountains. So that's not great for us. Anyways, we keep building up our city in the north here, making it stronger because as you saw, green put an army down and actually captured one of our ocean tiles. We spawn our own army, we send it south and we get that tile back plus a river. So that's a bonus. One other cool thing is mountains have a higher defensive bonus. So blue soldiers there aren't dealing any damage to us. They're not trying to take our territories. And so he's just attacking green, which is good. Usually the AI is pretty vindictive. If you try to take any of their territory, they'll just uh, drop an army on your border. And if they take the territory, they'll keep on attacking you. But if they don't manage to take it, they'll leave. And then when you send a soldier over to defend that territory uh, and they leave, then they lose the threatened bonus on yours. And then you get it on theirs because you're attacking them with nothing. And so they send a soldier back. So you just kind of get stuck in a loop of having to defend. So if you can, it's nice to not get into a battle with an AI. Especially in a situation like this where uh, I'm fighting with green and I can hopefully just put all my energy onto him. We buy our second unit here, a boat, and we send it across the strait, the channel. <laughs> Although I guess there's no tunnel yet, so it's just the channel. And we're trying to capture back our territory. You can see we got the two of them threatened. Uh, we also get a nice one, which is reduce your wealth waste. So if you uh, reduce your wealth waste to the minimum amount, you get a little bonus and then you don't lose any wealth. So one of the things in this game is if you have uh, no text researched and say you have 100 gold, the default waste is, I have no clue, something like 20%. So you'll just lose 20 coins per turn to waste, you know, having a big treasury and little people stealing your coins or something like that. But with this tech, you get an iron tight treasury and you don't lose anything, which is useful because one of the win conditions for this map is saving up 800 gold. So you can imagine if you had waste, that would be a lot of gold going missing. We've made some really nice progress on the Gauls or green here. We've taken a lot of ocean tiles. We've taken some of Northern France and now we're pushing into central France. Blue's also being nice and making his soldiers bounce around. And uh, green is menacing, and, or the, sorry, dark green is menacing light green from the south. 
But if you take a look at Green way in the south, you see he's pretty big. He's pretty much secured all of Africa, and now he's just fighting with Egypt. But he has three armies and a lot of power. Not looking good. Uh, luckily for us, we're attacking Green still, and he moves his troops to defend one tile in the east. But we get the mountain and the grassland anyway, and kill an army because it has no tile to retreat to. As well, our boat uh, attacks uh, the ocean and gets them off the northern coast of Spain. And we're making some really good progress on Green, especially because he lost one of his army units. So now he has less stuff uh, able to defend. We plop another city down, which is another good chance because it was on a grassland. So we get another power attack, which is another one of the opportunities to win. I think it's 800 gold for three stars or crowns and uh, 18 power attacks for three crowns. And you need uh, eight to win. So that's six out of eight crowns already. Useful. And you can see we're pushing more on the Gauls. We have both of his uh, northern cities on fire, all these things under attack. We don't manage to get the northern two tiles, but we do get the southern city and the tile next to it. I pick up this one because I figure I'll go for the ornamental garden uh, with my science because I'm not really sure what else I'll spend it on. I can get power text, but it doesn't really matter. But I'm also starting to be a little bit careful with my gold because I think I want to maybe save it up or use it for something else. And you don't want to spend too much on power. You can see the big powerhouses here, the Babylonians in the Far East who are gobbling up some of Egypt. Number one, of course, being uh, the Carthaginians in Africa who have destroyed most of Egypt since we last talked about them. And the Greeks in the middle, which have a nice little empire, and then along with ourselves, I guess. It's nice, you can finally see, like, we broke down the Gauls, and then their empire is just crumbling. Each turn, we're taking another tile from them, and they can't really do anything about it. Like, he moved his boat all the way over there, but we still took that tile, and now his northern tiles are all under attack. We can't defend everywhere at once. Big turn for us. We capture two tiles from green, but it splits his uh, one tile away. So we're able to claim that one for ourselves. We capture one of the cities, which is good. And now he's pretty much on the back foot. Uh, luckily for us, Carthage wasn't trying to take him too much from the south as well. So we were able to take most of his territory for ourselves. And we've maintained a pretty peaceful alliance with blue to our east. So we've really just been able to dump all of our units on him. And here I'm taking a good long look at the wind conditions because I see that uh, Carthage has three crowns, which I don't like because I don't have any yet. What I see is I have like a high t or, or low tens of powers and I need to get to 18 to get those three crowns. So I realize I don't want to save up my knowledge to get uh, that 600 research point crown, the opportunity I picked up, and instead I need to spend it on power technologies. I'm also saving up my coins. I'm at 200 or something, which isn't terrible. But you can see that Carthage has a shit done because they have all this desert tile. Desert is kind of like the ocean of the land. I think that's a common statement anywhere, but it especially goes for this game because the yield are really expensive to purchase but you can kind of go and expand across the desert. They're also often uh, pretty expansive. And it doesn't make it any easier too that Carthage is, I think, easy or very easy. That's its ranking. You can see we capture the Gaul's southernmost city and they're gone. We have the whole Iberian Peninsula to ourselves, And now I'm trying to push really hard into green. You can see they only need 90 bucks to get to their final wealth, but sometimes the AI struggles with making those decisions. So I'm going to see if we can push south and maybe capture one of their cities. I don't know if that will help us take away their population. They're attacking some of Babylon's cities too, which isn't good. It seems like no one's strong enough to really attack them except for me, but I wasn't able to get to them until I went through light green. We're at 300. We're slowly saving up, but we simply just don't have the amount of territory we need to save gold quick enough. Like, 
doesn't quite look like it, but green probably has almost double the amount of territory that we do. Still, we're attacking him. We're moving our boats down, capturing some of his territory, seeing if we can push in. I buy another tech here. And I only need one more to get my first, or well, not first, but the first three crown uh, victory condition, which would be good. And then we just need to save a bit more money. We're almost, we're at 450 this turn, which is pretty good. And just a few more turns that we can hold on. Green hasn't been able to close it out yet, but then they do and they win, which was unfortunate. But I'm pretty happy we came pretty hard for a very hard sieve. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.